and they showed you the sweet new uniforms. You, they, you know, talking about the posters, the figurines, and everything. You think that this would be like a new outfit that would have looked so cool going towards the future, and then you find out it's literally thirty fucking seconds, and you never see the outfits again. Yeah, that was pretty distressing. God, <laughs> like, yep. uh, that looks so good. cool. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Anime East God podcast. On this episode, we'll be discussing the My Hero Academia World's Heroes mission, uh, the third movie that just came out. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Shren. Hello. Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo. Next up, we have Taylor. Hello. And finally, we have Johan. I will sell this for $200 in two years. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Terrible. What, okay, so. Yeah, we got her first. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so this episode we're going to talk about this is the third Hero Academia movie. Um, pretty sure it's not canon. So, Probably nothing, absolutely not. nothing mm-hmm. too important to relate to the plot of the, the main show. You don't have to be caught up or anything to know what's going on. I thought this was supposed to be like the main focus between Deku and Todoroki and Bakugo. We'll dive deep into like more of that later. So, I guess, brief summary of. Just the way the movie went. Huge board of warnings. We're going to talk about everything. So if you haven't watched the movie, just don't watch this video. Go go watch the movie first. Why are you even here? That's what I want to know. If you haven't <laughs> yes. seen the movie yet. Yes. If you, if you want to know if the movie was good, it was okay. Continue. Like oh, 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 listen we'll to this. Um, you should still go watch it. If you like, if you like the series, go watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess that, so brief review of what happens. Like, I guess it starts off pretty like like we start right away with like the main story. It's like, oh, there's this, is this cult? Because you know this anime, you always gotta have a cult. The beginning started up like it started so fucking fast. It basically just threw you in action. Like basically. when you had no really clue what was going on, you just knew like you just saw like a bunch of death and people getting turned into like turtles, wings going crazy. Basically, quirks just going nuts. Yeah. And and, and then yeah, there was this. Uh, it definitely seemed fairly dark for well at the beginning for a hero hero movie. They didn't really, well, I guess they explained it later, but they they definitely threw you right into the action. And they showed you the sweet new uniforms. You you know, talking about the posters, the figurines and everything. You think that this would be like a new outfit that would have looked so cool going towards the future. And then you find out it's literally 30 fucking seconds and you never see the outfits again. Yeah, that was pretty distressing. God. (laughs) That looks looks so cool. Which one was your favorite? Deku? Todoroki or Bakugo? Todoroki. Oh, 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 I don't even remember. I don't, I don't even remember uniforms. Like, until Strad mentioned that it was only 30 seconds, I was like, wait, we had new uniforms in this movie? Exactly! Exactly! <laughs> no, actually, so. De- Deku's was pretty sick, too. Look at so. Bakugo right there. This one. Ugh. Yeah. Hard to see on the screen, sir. So, yeah. <laughs> hold, 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 oh my hold, God. Save, save it for later. I can full screen you later. But um, let me just let you go on. So, so we have to set up where, like, we have the cult. They basically, um, you know, because we still have what twenty percent of the world's quirkless. So they want. They're trying to appeal to the people who are quirkless. They're saying they're being oppressed. So we're gonna make a new society for them. We're gonna kill off everyone with quirks using this like bio weapon that. Makes them go out of control. Basically, like a really boosted form of those drugs that like boost your quirks. And then everyone's villains all... with quirks are still working with them too. So you know, that's yeah. always great. Yeah, that too. Which, which, which it maybe doesn't make sense. We can go into that a little bit more. <laughs> but um, so and then everyone's like all split up sense. around the world. I, I feel like it kind of makes sense, right? Because uh, again, with the whole purpose of this cult is that you know the world is being poisoned by people with quirks and what better way to you know redeem yourself for for plaguing this earth with your presence than to help like purify the earth of other people like you so it it, it kind of makes sense in my yeah. head mm-hmm. um, you know what's funny even though like they hated people with quirks they were they were idolatrying idol worshiping the statue of the baby the first quirk, the the mm-hmm. flashy baby, and it's like, oh yes, you hate them, but you don't. <laughs> oh yeah, Pagans. I remember the statue. Is that what they were doing though? It's a like gold statue. I mean, I think, was it the ba- was the baby basically just like the, the was it the, the first quirk the first or was quirk, it just like yeah, the, yeah, the first, yeah. Quirk. Yeah. first quirk? Yeah, interesting, mm-hmm. interesting. Yep. So oh, that's kind of that's kind of so, but like basically, like all all like the characters are all split up in different countries. You got like if they're so so Deku and his team Deku Bakugo and 
Todoroki. They're in like this fictional European country called Orthio. And that's like where the main basically the main story is gonna happen. And then you have everyone else like they're like, you know, like they're in like they like they're in here in the US, they're in Japan, in France, and like Egypt and all these other places. No Mexico for you, did, Johan. Sorry, but <laughs> did, no uh, did you guys did you did you guys get baited too when they were like showing like all the like the the, the characters that were showing up on the screen, and then mm-hmm. we saw Lemillion? Did anybody think like we were like yes. uh, okay? No. <laughs> when no. they were no. getting no, ready, I didn't, like, think so. I didn't think so either. <laughs> after after it was like when I was in the movie, I was next to um, with Nick, and I saw Lemillion, and I went like, "What the fuck? That man's yeah. gonna die!" Yeah, like, you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's okay that you're strong. And you're you know you're you encourage like you know braveness, but being yeah. real, man. Come on. Dude, he I, I think he can probably get like a room going if he needs to though. I, I feel like if this man gave me a pep talk, I could I could uh, I could hit that adrenaline rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> okay. So so that's like I'm just that's like the setup for the beginning. This character that's like that's important for like this story we have uh Rody. Rody Soul. I don't I don't know why I specifically remember his name, but like his name is Rody Soul. It's a ridiculous name. It's a ridiculous so, name, that's and right. And he has such a really weird quirk where he has like this bird that can like tell people what he's actually feeling. So that's that's his quirk. But somehow he's like, you know, he's super agile, can do like parkour and stuff. And and Deku can't keep up with him. Yeah. Not even with his one for all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, he, he was he was on Rhodey's like home territory. Like he knew he, where he was going, right? So yeah, no. 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 yeah. Deku, sure. Deku wasn't really trying, right? If that's you really all, think about it. <laughs> if that's all it took to basically like take like a was it like the equivalent of like five or ten percent one for all, uh-huh. then you know. Yo, I, I want to say I don't think he even used his quirk. I think it was just all like his raw shiny. abilities. Yeah, was he shiny? So yeah, he oh, shiny. yeah, he used. Oh yeah. Yeah, or his his full calling. That tells us something, though. Well, I mean, he didn't say, like, 5%, so maybe it was, like, 1% or something. You know, he was, he was taking it easy, you know? You know, well, he's I mean, as strong as All Might. That's what we can take from this. Uh-huh. this okay, thing? sir. Okay, yeah. sir. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll shut that down immediately. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, um, and then they're, yeah, they're in Orthio. Rudy's from Or- Rhodey is in Orthio, and, like, basically, he gets caught up in, like, kind of in between, like, the plots of, like, the cult and with, like, with Deku. Like, they en- actually end up with, like, a briefcase that has, like, the secrets to where the cultist is planning, so. And then Deku gets framed as well. Like, he gets framed as, like, a murderer. So, he's basically, like, running away. Mm-hmm. A lot of the movies, like, it's the journey between with, like, with, with Rhodey and Deku, that's like a, a good chunk of the movie too. Yeah, it's just those two yeah. where they're sneaking across of... to the border to the neighboring country and fighting off like their pursuers. Yeah, a lot of slow moments with just like all of a sudden uh, villain fights that they just kind of uh, show up almost out of nowhere and things things start happening and yep, and then we move on. Yep, I and have then, to um... say, however, that Beros, the the bow and arrow waifu, that was yeah. good. You remember her name? Dude. What a waste oh, of like, a character, though. Like, she, she was pretty hot. Too bad she was crazy, but she was pretty hot. Dude, it was just like a waste of a character, though, because I thought her whole character itself, like the quirk, everything was just so sick. Mm-hmm. And then just to kind of just burn it out from the in this movie where you really don't know any of her backstory. Nothing like that. You just know she's just a cra- like, crazy cultist. And then, you know, then mm-hmm. she just decides to swan dive off the helicopter. I just feel like a character like that would have benefited so much more in like the actual show. But they just uh, they just wasted it. It's like Darth Maul. Oh, wait. oh, that's actually a good comparison. Yeah. Interesting. Basically, like the character was just so good, and just bam, <laughs> gone. But anyway, interesting. Yeah. So, Rudy and Deku, like you're trying to escape. Eventually, they do meet up with Bakugo and Todoroki, and they find out like you know the secrets behind the cult. They find out that the briefcase had like a uh, was it a disarming chip to get rid of like to deactivate all the bombs because then you know the cultist. What, what was the cultist's name? Even I mean I forgot. Like. Yeah, man. Humorize. He's humorize. A, a okay. Guy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Humorize. I don't even remember that. What? It was basically said throughout the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot, sir. All right. I forgot same, too. Same. Same. So, like I would only give you credit for forgetting the main guy's name, which was kind of weird, but I mean, it it is what it is. But yeah, humorize was just plastered across the whole thing. Mm-hmm. But basically, like, yeah, human rights, they have, like, 25 bombs across the world, and they're gonna, you know, explode it, so everyone's desperate to find it. And Deku, Bakugo, Todoroki, they have the disarming key, and they find out that, like, there's one location that's not, doesn't have a bomb or something, and that's, like, in somewhere in Ireland, just kind of random, but okay. Just a shout out to your Ireland yeah. people. I think they <laughs> gave us, like, didn't they give give them, the, like, this, like, the around the location of the bombs? 
it, it's probably came give from, them from a like chance? from like the file that, that they saw like on the computer or whatever i i don't remember much from that detail oh, but my base... google my google was the hacker yes he went it on it and basically just opened up files. i know all, <laughs> all the people spock ago uh, uh so what the so with the locations of the bombs it, they weren't really false locations like the bombs were there at the locations that they pinged because the idea was that since you couldn't really stop the bombs from triggering, like, what's the point of telling them where the bombs were, right? So the key part was that they didn't tell them where the trigger was, which was in Ireland. So uh, they didn't really lie, per se. They just kind of trapped them into going to where the bombs were. So once it triggers, you know, there goes all right. Yeah. They didn't have any way to stop and it. They had, like, right. they had like two hours. So Rhodey had to like had somehow because he's a pilot, too. He had to take like take the plane from wherever they are in, in Europe, some random place in Europe, go all the way to Ireland. Just the ending part, just like those three just get split up where like they're all fighting these <laughs> each of these random different people. Deku fights he fights, fights the final villain. He does his... He actually does, like, a United States of the World smash attack, oh which was ridiculous. And then they pull it off, so they disarm the bomb. So I guess that's, like, kind of like a basic rundown of how this movie went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, kind of hoping for a lot more team... Like, just, like, team fights. Oh, my God. Like, that's, like, the most disappointing thing to me is because like so much of the the, the marketing around this was about like the, the three main characters or whatever and like do that ending part they all got split up and so i was really hoping they'd be like team fights that pull off like you know cool animations but we didn't get to see any of it yeah does anybody yeah. want to start with like the uh i guess what they thought were was strong or like they're strong on the weaknesses taylor uh, yes i was just gonna say i actually really liked the original character of rudy rudy i thought like i don't know how you guys felt i just felt like he was adorable i don't normally like characters that are introduced just for movies like this like from the previous hero movies i don't remember a single solitary person that was like unique to just those movies and so i really liked him as a character i, I just and other than that i I totally understand where you guys are coming from that you want more team fights. I just personally don't care at all. Um, <laughs> I, I, I guess. Oof, I guess I, you just don't care about the fights, though, in general, in anime. <laughs> well, I kind of care about them in Hero, just because I, you know, they have interesting quirks and stuff like that. I mean, that's kind of part of the whole show. You have to like it a little bit for this to like the show at all, almost. But yeah, I mean, generally, it's not my favorite. I did like some of the villains that they fought at the end, but just not like the um, not the big bad guy. I thought that whole battle was pretty ridiculous. Him but I'll say that for when we go to the um, Otherwise, I mean, I don't know. I felt like it was a little bit heavy handed. Like they, they did the absolute most basic way of having the idea of this cult that's against quirks um it was it was heavy-handed but i like the idea that that's who the villain was of of the series because i think it totally makes sense that there would be those people in this world you know so i was a fan of that it wasn't somebody that just wanted to do evil things for evil which i feel like happens a lot in these types of movies <laughs> um, i mean yeah your academia like they've been pretty good about that for their villains like you think about stain you know true. like not like some crazy person he really he just sees like the hero system as like as very shallow which it is in this world so for me i, I just feel like hero like, i think hero's weakness is definitely the villains I just I really haven't cared about many of them, uh, especially the but by far the villains for the movies are the are, are the worst. But then I, I have kind of just lower expectations of movies because the the villain in the first one was I, I think it was just what, just like a terrorist, not a terrorist group, but they were trying to take over to get that that mind thing that basically just like amplifies your quirk. So they basically just try to take over that building. And then the, the second one, the second movie was with the 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 guy that could hold what, like seven quirks at a time or something. Uh, I don't even remember. I don't even remember what his motivation was, but it was basically. I I, I thought it was just evil to, in a sense to be evil, and like and then this guy too, like where he's trying to get rid of everybody who has a quirk, but yet he teams up with villains with quirks who are also was... like doping as well. Like, okay. it just, it, it, so that didn't make now, any sense. Either now that you bring it up, so it's like I like the initial idea of the villain, but I think like once they finally reveal, reveal his motive, it just it felt it didn't feel like it made sense of like what he was doing with, yeah. like with humor rise like humor rise itself like i think their con their concept as a cult like actually is actually i thought that was really good because yeah. like you can see why people want to join this organization but then like but then the the villain's motivation to create it like i thought that was very weird the way they revealed it at the end uh so so with this one i felt like the only reason why he became <laughs> evil was the fact that uh people gave up on him because no matter what uh he tried to do to embrace their like their their feelings or just their kindness it got reflected back so they left them alone so he grew up being you know very lonely and then he he cursed it this poisonous power that he had right so he thought that would be better off if no one else felt uh the the pain that he did 
So that's why he was kind of like motivated to just get rid of all quirks in the world, in a sense. And I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like if you look at like the arc from the whole season that's happened with um, Shigaraki. Shigaraki, thank you. Yes. Um, since we've like gone so much into Shigaraki's backstory, like I feel like he would be like almost like the target audience for this cult because it's like, wow, look at how your life got fucked over by your quirk. You know what I mean? So I think it's yep. actually yep. a great concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but it didn't feel unique though because it's been done before. Mm-hmm. So well, I was yeah. hoping for more of a unique stand uh, stance for his character. I also kind of felt like the how they resolved this uh, the ending it was typical here academia where it it's just awful. like <laughs> where you think like there's gonna be like this, maybe this crazy di- kind of different way of like uh, of going around this like reflecting thing, but it's literally just Deku just punching through it. <laughs> like I want to say my biggest gripe about this movie was that, right? Yeah, because same. if you think about it, Deku has always been the methodical fighter. Yes. Right? He's he's <laughs> always keeping notes down. He's mm-hmm. trying to like take notes of like all these different quirks, their strong points, their styles, you know, you know mm-hmm. whatever, right? Deku has always been the guy that that fights with his head as well as mm-hmm. with his strength. And then, you know, going from season one where yeah, he's just starting to grasp his power, okay, brute force your way through the boss. Okay, yep. it makes sense. Yep, understandable. You know, movie two, you you realize that you yourself could not compete with the power of this villain. So what do you do? You you double your power and then give it to Bakugo, right, to increase his power as well to finally kill the villain. Okay, that that kind that kind of makes sense. But with this one, right, he was he was kind of analyzing, uh, what was it Flecked or whatever the guy's name was, mm-hmm. and I actually remember you his know, name. <laughs> I mean, he reflects, so Fleck kind of makes... It, I, I didn't think about yeah. that just now. I was the one who was paying attention to the movie, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so you got so you got this like crazy showdown happening, right? And then uh, Deku's analyzing that, oh shit, whenever I throw at, you know, this Fleck guy, he just reflects it back at me. But then instead of like trying to find a way to get around it, right? Like say, you know, if you don't watch Naruto, I'm sorry. But you know how when Rock Lee and Gaara first fought... Right, Gar had this like amazing force field that would just block any attack that comes his way. But uh, Rock Lee overcame it by like speeding past his barrier in a sense. So I was thinking that maybe Deku can do that too because he's also super fast, super strong. That kind of would have made sense. But the fact that you kept just like pummeling your attacks into this guy <laughs> repeatedly, and then you know thanks to plot armor, it it finally broke through and he was able to beat the guy uh, through some kind of weird. Jojo animation. Ora, 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 ora. Yeah, I, I don't know what that was, but that was definitely not like Hero Academy, uh, I, Academy style. So it was really weird. About, when, I, when we were watching it, what I, the only thing I was thinking about was when I got Pokemon Yellow and you start out with Pikachu and their first uh, gym is the Rock Gym and you just have to like bulk up that Pikachu to make it do anything. Because <laughs> right? it's just like. <laughs> There's like so, no other fucking option. It's just torture getting past that first gym. I mean, it's been years, but <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, basically right. <laughs> since, since you since you brought up that last fight with Deku, I just want to mention that like I really don't like how they brought up they brought in the United States of World Smash because mm-hmm. it feels like such like you know because the United States of Smash is such an important like thing for All Might for him to use it. So you whenever Deku gets like any United States attack, like you want you want to be feel special. He just got out of nowhere in this fight and just like just just BS his way to bring it out and finally like kill like the, the beat, beat the villain with that and like uh, I think that's such like a such a waste of like like an important moment right there. Like that's that's like something like yeah. it's probably not it's probably not the canon movies I learned in like the anime, but like but I really don't like them using like the United States like move like in this, you know, this random like filler movie. It, it's just like okay, it just yeah. lessens yeah. impact if it comes like also- later. I also felt that it just looked really stupid. <laughs> like I just did not. It was pretty, it pretty dumb. dumb. Yeah. Like I almost just. I, I think I did burst out laughing. I was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" Dude, like the the moment W up to it was so hype, right? I was getting I ready for this epic move, and then you got Deku just standing there, and apparently there's clones of him like spacing out because he's going so fast, he's moving so fast. Just yeah. Like he's in his kung fu uh, like karate stance, just throwing punches really fast. Apparently, and there's like the the the, the vivid rainbow like. Uh, it was it was it was it ruined the moment so bad i i i don't know I I mean, psycho <laughs> moment. right yeah you know, it just felt very cheap for it to come out and like, there's no consequences for him using it you compare it where you compare it to all might like that was the end of like all might so mm-hmm. well i mean deku was you know he's basically bruised all hell at the end of it yeah he it was pretty much done after that yeah, yeah. <laughs> you uh, know what? And they could, like they they had like three different animes. First of all, when I saw it, like I was laughing because Deku was literally going Super Saiyan. 
he was like screaming, gathering his power. Then he turned like his hair turns like okay, almost bluish that. green. But we saw that in the previous arc, though, with uh, yeah, with, uh, over yeah, with, like I feel like they are using things that work in the past and then like over squeezing them. It's a movie, and, yeah, yeah. They, they gave eye candy for us, but the thing is, I I have always I hated since like the we first saw it during the overhaul overhaul arc was when <laughs> he uh, when he those stupid punches like those those fists. Like I just can't stand those those fists. Oh, like, that's, they that's, just look that's, they just look so bad. Okay, that's what you're talking about. I thought Trent, I thought you were talking about how you hate how all these like like the main show just has to suffer because of the movies. Like how oh, overall well, like or how, Lemillion, like, how, how the millions fight got screwed over because Dude, they, so they focus on oh. the movie and now we were saying like, you know, the villains arc here got ruined because they focus their their efforts the, on the movie that was lamillion's fucking moment like what happens to lamillion it's like dude really you're gonna give him a fucking slideshow that's what he deserves so but no that that point though like with the animation with like just, just the fist i don't know what it is but it just because it just looks so kind of like out of place of like what we've seen with like all my quirk or like when all my had it and then when deku has it like, even mm-hmm. his previous stuff like everything's like looked normal i feel like it would look better if it was just showing us like an almost like impact waves I was where say, they were just like it, it, i think that would look way better that's how they did it before like it like they yeah, just exactly. there's always the impact waves and actually didn't make an yeah, impact like my... you, you you always felt that impact so yeah mm. i get your, i get your saying now it, just, now it just looks really weird i i, I don't know I, I really don't like it i i hope that it's a choice to decide to go away from in the future and then next it's, not canon. it's not canon, so it's probably never but gonna happen again. Overhaul guys. was canon, and we saw that shit. <laughs> they could you think like that's, they, that's not the movie, so they said that no. they could like <laughs> the last thing we saw about Deku is like, oh, you know, he has black whip and he kind of knows how to use it, but mm-hmm. not really. And in the movie, he was like, Oh, yeah, I'll just use black whip for this. And he was like, How are you yeah. doing that? It's a, a movie. Wait, wait. I'm yeah, okay. It's with a movie. That. I'm willing to suspend my disbelief. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a movie, you know, it's a canon, it's for us, it's for the viewers. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, for the creators have fun with it something that i really liked about the movie the only i think team fight that was in the movie the serpent guys versus bakugo those guys mm-hmm. were crazy i love the design yeah, that yeah. like the yep. twins. dude i got one out of the three yep. dude i got say, bakugo like, going like what's that oh uh, i mean i'll i so i give props to the bakugo fight because that was the best fight in the yep, movie 100 i'm just man i'm i'm sad that <laughs> my, my boy todoroki got shafted he got like such he like the random filler dude guy. <laughs> he got he's probably like barely anything man he just got like, this random guy chasing him and then got like absorbed in the first like he was, was drowning and then he got absorbed in the flames and right. Just like I don't know, he just barely did anything. Whereas like Bakugo got, swim, got, got so Bakugo got so fucked up with like the, the the razors, and he had to like overcome so much. And told Rocky just like ah, oh, no, man. <laughs> that man I'm can sad, breathe man. underwater. They, they did him dirty. Yeah. They did him dirty. Well, Todoroki, Todoroki had some really good stuff in the in the season at least. Whereas I don't really remember mm. Bakugo's stuff all that well. So I I don't know. Maybe no. they were trying to balance it out, or does that sound ridiculous? I'm sad. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I feel like the last two movies they're just doing their best to to make Bakugo stand out, right? It yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't okay, make but... sense why they throw everyone else like in the backseat. Like I I gotta say, like you guys are right. To me, the 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 the, the, the star fight of the show was Bakugo versus the two blade guys. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that was the only fight that really stood out to me without making me laugh really hard and crazy like... at the same time. <laughs> That's all. So... I mean, so it's cool, but it's also it's really weird how his stands out more than what should be like. Deku versus the final villain. Like I don't understand mm-hmm. like that choice. Like I mean, Bakugo dude. was technique, and you know we love Bakugo, and Deku was just like, okay, yeah, the animation Bruce budget. Trent. Here you go, thirty seconds. Yeah. Go crazy, love it. Yeah, Done. how much money we got left? Oh, 30 seconds. All right, burn it. <laughs> just yeah, it's like, that. Just it's it. and I talked up to this uh, after the movie ended with Ku. The scene specifically when Deku is chasing in the. In the rooftops, you know, Rudy, yeah, Rudy. When he was chasing him, the fucking Naruto versus Pain animation, I didn't like that. It was like almost frame by frame, and it was like the faces are wrong, everything looks squared. It's like they made that on purpose just to save money for the important. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, I, I, I don't have to like go back and see it. Uh, the only like, parts I remember that I remember animation wise that bothered me was uh, there was a few times where you just looked like the frame frames were dropping. Mm-hmm. It was just for some really weird kind of like a when they were doing like that really long animation scene where it just looked like things were moving at like 10, 15 frames. That was the only part that I noticed. 
Other than that, yeah, I thought it was fine. I don't know. I didn't even have much of a problem with animation. I'm not, but then again, I'm not picky like you guys, so I thought it was fine. But yeah, for a movie, like you would kind of expect it a little bit better. So I hate yeah. that they didn't put the regular villains on the movies. You know, it's like just give me, Again, give me a little Dabi, give me a little, give me a little Doga, I mean, please. But then I, oh my uh, god, you're yeah. so biased. <laughs> I don't know. Because like at least if you have like other villains, you can like make the excuse that it is totally filler. But then if you have like League of Villains in here, then what do you say? <laughs> like like this thing didn't Elephants happen. Are filler. No. They could be in another country, like finding a bomb. It would be amazing if everything happened in the movie, but there there was another bomb that the League of Villains found, and it's like. What the fuck is this? And like people taking care of it, it's like, oh no, you shouldn't be here. And it's like, bitch, you know who we are. And then they start having their own fight. And then like at the end, that's... nothing happens. And it's like, hmm. See, yeah, I feel like I'd be distracting. <laughs> I've yeah. seen movies do that kind of concept before well. Um, but I don't trust that they would have done it well. Probably, this probably movie. Not. <laughs> no. I think they would have botched it if they tried. No. You know what I mean? No. But it would have been so fun, like in a non-canon movie when they can go crazy, seeing the villains awaken quirks just go crazy. Oh my god! I mean, god. we barely saw the awakened stuff though, like in the in yeah. the actual anime. So it, it would have been spoilers. I, mean, I, guess, I, at that point. I, I appreciate the fact that with this movie, they didn't really spoil anything in the future, like in the possible like, future, like, right? Like, like the like last the movie. movie, like the second like the movie. movie. All of a sudden, like Deku can shoot uh, like airways with his fingers. Okay, I thought that was really cool, but I was like, wait, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> yeah. Like with this, even though that all you really see is a refined black whip and like nothing else really. Um, oh, and then of course, like Todoroki, Todoroki finally, yeah. yeah, like he finally like, finished uh, polishing his his skills as well, right? Um, I thought I thought that was fine, just because, like I said, you didn't really get spoiled for any potential new powers in the future, right? So I, so I think that was fine. I think I I, think I really only have one more thing to say. Uh, my favorite, I remember my favorite part of the movie when uh, Todoroki and Bakugo were talking. And for some reason, cops were sneaking around thinking they could actually oh, do something. God. Oh, my but God. I, I just remember thinking, like, I get it, like, you know, how cops, you know, obviously they're quirkless. They want to like, you know, probably get rid of the quirk the quirk people because, it, one, it'll make their job way easier. But I just thought it was just ridiculous where they're trying to sneak around, uh, like, heroes, basically, with where they, they should know they can't do shit. But and just, to... like, the animation of how they did it was just very, it's so cartoonish. Like, like. <laughs> Well, you know, let's use like, like something from Scooby Doo. Or ben it just and looks Jerry. Supposed... Yeah, you know, like exactly. they were thinking like with yes. the hand. <laughs> yeah. It just looks so bad and just stupid. It's just like, guys, what do you think you can do in this situation? It just, it was just so ridiculous and stupid. Uh, I think we all pretty much burst out laughing in the mo- in the theater once that happened. It was, it was only like a second long too. Like it no, was, it was so yeah, short, yeah. But it and it was so <laughs> memorable. <laughs> Uh, I mean, um, I have I, a controversial I, opinion about what my favorite part was. <laughs> oh boy, I was a fan of the montage. <laughs> I thought the montage was horrible. Why wouldn't you be a fan of the montage? The montage? Which mo- what montage? The montage oh, when in the middle. When they were, they, were, when they were driving the truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, I just thought yeah. it was cute. I just thought because it was it's horrible. two boys hanging out alone. Of cute yeah. music too. Which also I didn't realize it was Asian Kung Fu Generation because I can't I can't recognize the lead guy sing his voice anymore because it's, it's I so know, long. right? I know, mm. I agree. But yeah, I like that scene. I don't really know why. I just thought it was cute and yeah. the rest of it was pretty rough after that. Yeah, I think my least favorite was, was when you hear like those uh like the music videos in a sense where somebody was singing. It didn't sound like Asian Kung Fu. It sounded like just terribleness. It sounded like literally like uh like uh Rody was singing. I'm pretty sure like, it was Asian Kung Fu for, for, for both. Like the montage what? and the ending. I'm pretty oh, sure. Dude, that was bad. That's... <laughs> I don't know. I just but, didn't recognize the guy. Yeah, so. those those scenes were, I thought, for me, I, I thought think, were I didn't strange. think the song was that bad, sir. Uh, well, I mean, I thought, like I said, I thought it was Rody singing it. I didn't think it was even Asian Kung Fu. Because it sounded more like Rody than Asian Kung Fu. Uh, but the, the, those, like, those scenes where they were just, like, the, the random singing and your... Your uh, uh, was it photo shoot things? I just thought we were pretty awful. That's fair. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I'm glad fair. you enjoyed it. I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> I think so. I liked it because it was, it was bad. You know what I mean? Like I liked it because it was kind of cringe. To me, yeah. uh, oh my god! <laughs> like they're, okay. doing, they're doing like a I didn't, think, I, didn't, part. I didn't think it was cringy. I thought it was just forgettable. Like for like. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing like a cutscene like they've known each other for their entire lives but literally it was like it was like a week 
<laughs> well, you, you have to think about it, right? Because you have to tie their relationship, like make them go about bonds. each other. Yeah. yeah. You know? Otherwise, the ending wouldn't really make sense. Like, why would Rhodey go through all this for Deku, mm -hmm. right? Like, why yeah. would you believe in him right. if you didn't have that bonding moment? Right. Yeah. Right. So. Of course. So this is all setting up for Rhodey in the main story, right? Right, guys? I wish. I right. mean, they were shooting at both of them, and they were fugitives together. So that's probably oh, so... a little bonding. It's like, mm, Okay, so know. season six, we'll see Rhodey then. We'll see him oh, no. truly shine, right? Well, yeah, Deku yeah, said... Sure. I no, hope I'm we see you again. He's a filler character. We're never seeing him again. <laughs> it was sad because Deku said, I hope we see you again. And he's like, no. It's like, In the airport. Sure. It's like, sure. oh, okay. Yeah. You know who was like... It, he was pretty funny. Didn't do shit, but it was pretty funny. Uh, Salam, the like the, <laughs> the Egyptian, the Egyptian guy. hero. He <laughs> was like, what the fuck? They were like, what? he's so fast, and he's just like, Fuck. this is a piece of paper. Because uh? <laughs> he's a he's a tilegraphic drawing. Oh, he's hero, the foil. Sir. He's a he's a foil uh, piece of paper. So he's like he's the, <laughs> oh, the foil art card. You know? Yeah, he's okay. very shiny and glimmery. I don't know. See that you got that, you know, like centipede man. You got bubble girl. I mean, you you got vinegar boy if he's still alive somehow. Um, <laughs> you always got. I mean, that it, it takes it takes all <laughs> kinds, bro. All <laughs> kinds in this world. The vinegar guy. Vinegar boy. <laughs> vinegar boy. You don't remember vinegar boy? Oh my goodness. Vinegar boy. Is, How do you not remember vinegar boy? Like, like where any water you touch oh, turns into vinegar. <laughs> Oh, so like, okay, so like, okay, what, okay. like when he was like in the river, he turned the river the whole river into vinegar. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. It did. I, I wish we got to see him again. <laughs> like uh, I don't know. Like if it wasn't for the main cast, it, it's it's hard, right? I mean, I guess you have to be as diverse as possible. So you can't possibly love all the designs. But yeah, there's there's only so many that stands out. So also, um, is this the first time that we've seen a queer? Which is like outside of the of the person's body, like the little bird. The, oh, absolutely not! I'm sure. Know? Oh no, remember. the bird. Oh I no, I, I'm I'm sure they have so many ridiculous ass. Quirks. I don't know. Even like in the in the backgrounds, I'm sure that we've seen what we've mm -hmm. been told, but we've just forgotten. Or even yeah. like that guy who like can talk to animals. That's in class one A. Like you, he doesn't mm -hmm. even have one on him. He can just. Well, I suppose that's not really a good comparison, but. Yeah, because yeah, he's basically talking about like something like it's its own entity almost. I mean, there's Tokiyami, right? So like his oh, shadow yeah, bird. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's a thing. Or even uh, fucking Minata with his stupid purple balls that can go elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I wouldn't call him a, a separate entity because yeah. it's not really living. <laughs> I don't think they're alive. <laughs> but, oh yeah, that's uh, a fair point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have... I forgot about that living aspect. Uh, of it. Mushroom girl, you know, because she grows mushrooms, and mushrooms are a living God. thing, right? But the consciousness, I, I don't know. the consciousness of the queer, right, right. But no, no, I, I'd say it's fairly unique. And then, like, of course, you know, it's the most useless quirk at the time, but it comes in clutch at the very end, I guess. So, like, gotta be done. Sure, that was probably one of like, know. obviously, besides uh, Bakugo's fight, probably my favorite moment of the movie was when. But Deku was down, he was all beaten, and then this goes to <laughs> goes to the main villain and he's like, Oh well, you know, I'm gonna give you everything. And Deku's like almost crying and he's like, How could you do this to me? And then Pino is in the back, like, Don't worry, we got you. And he's like, Ah, Pino's communicating to Deku. That was very cute and I like it. It's so it. cute. I agree. Sure. <laughs> I, I thought it was cheesy, but sure. I guess it takes all kinds. It yeah. was definitely yeah. cheesy. I mean, but it was one hundred percent cheesy. But it was still as uh, cute. <laughs> yeah, I found Rhodey annoying for a majority of the movie until the end. So, oh my because, god, you found him annoying? <laughs> well, it's just because it's like the same the kind of like whiny mentality. It's like, oh, if we give him the case, they'll, they'll they'll let us go, right? And then of course that's not the case. Then he gets attacked and then saved We're and kill you. The, the usual. I mean, stuff. to be fair, he was having to deal with a lot of shit that really wasn't his problem. <laughs> you know. Uh, I'd be pissed I if I was him. I'd be like, "Get me out of here." Let, let's let's be real. You kind of, I you, mean, you've picked this path in your life to be a thief, so you kind of expect these things to come for you to bitch out though at the end and constantly get yourself in trouble. That yeah. it, it made me really hate the guy, but I mean, of uh, course, in the end, he turned out to be the the key factor. So also, he works in a bar and he's like fourteen, and he's like, mm. Dude, I, he, he looks terrible. way older than that though. Yeah, he does. Yep. He's not eighteen. Dude, I, I thought he was. I thought he was an adult. Like he, he I thought he was an like adult that. too. But then until like, they did like a flashback of two years. Yeah, ago. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but I, I really don't have much more about um, this movie. 
I guess I'll say What's your I mean, I'll be I'll be basic say my favorite moment just just the, the Bakugo fight because the the highlight of the movie. I'll say too like I thought the pacing in this movie was pretty good. Although like I guess I did, I didn't I forgot about the montage so maybe besides that. But I thought overall like I was never I wasn't I was never bored through this movie. Like I I always, I had my attention t- towards it like always. So I give a props for that. And then I I feel like the tone of the movie, especially like with, like with humorized and like the villain and stuff, I felt like towards the end too like when you had the bombs go off and it felt tense i enjoy that aspect of the movie so that that was like with the pacing i, I that's why i enjoy about this movie traveling through the mountains was terrible that, that, that part was boring as hell i mean sure it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that but bad like, uh i think, I think you're like, expecting o- too much i think I mean, overall that could be just me. like overall it didn't really bother me too much so. Like, I want to say my only gripe with the movie was the fact that it had so much potential. And you can see it, too, but they just never executed it well, right? Like, you had some some badass villains. Like, even, like, from the get-go, like, you, they showed you that Human Rights had the potential to actually wipe out the world. You know, if it wasn't for plot armor and the fact that we need to have a 90-minute movie, uh, they could have easily just sent out the well, the bombs everywhere and just, like, triggered it. Like going, so. off, going off that too, like in the start too, you had like it was super tense with all the teams like split up too. But like they want to focus. Mm-hmm. It was it was really weird. Like they, you had the, everyone split up, and then you had like the focus of just Deku and 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 Rody. So it's like I felt like they should have like saying the expectations higher by having everyone split up. You'd think that like it'd be this mm-hmm. epic like world spanning like mission, but it's just basically it was just Deku and Rody for a lot of it. Yeah, yeah they pretty guess much what? like introduced the whole world, and then they were just like, "Well, you know it exists. It's there. People are doing things in those places." Use your imagination. <laughs> the, the movie is called the World Heroes Mission, right? And, and basically, you get like it's like the the outfits. You see them for a split second, and then they're gone, right? So, it like I said, there was so much potential, and then like like David said, I wasn't really ever bored like throughout the whole movie. I actually enjoyed it. Uh, but I guess I was just disappointed because I expected more as the movie went on. I think the whole thing with um, Hero for me, and part of the reason why I didn't like it so much to begin with, but now I enjoy it more, is because I've learned that I feel that this is a show that's very much about like missed um, like opportunities or something. Like, mm. look at how many characters there are in Class A, 1A, for example. Like, at least half of them, we had, like, one episode where we learned how they could use their quirk in a better way, and we learned maybe two seconds of backstory for a lot of them, and then they're really just kind of shown as, like, backdrop for the entire rest of the show. Mm -hmm. Like, they have a whole, like, group of men and women in Class 1A, and you only ever see the men. I've totally given up on ever thinking there will ever be a moment (laughs) where the girls will do anything, which is too bad, because whatever you're looking for, if you want, like, waifus or if you want power, I mean, they've got them, but fuck Mm -hmm. them i mean they guess they don't need to be in it and i feel like a lot of it was just tempering my expectations and like you know appreciating it for what it's good at (laughs) you know what i mean Mm. like don't get don't hope for too much (laughs) and just enjoy what it consistently gives you that's sad when you hear that (laughs) when you taylor when you still like miss like opportunity again i just i just think of all the million and the villain arc how like (laughs) the two movies like just screwed over the main series and I guess I guess yeah. you made a lot of money for the movies, but like you kind of ruin you ruin the legacy of the series by doing that. So, I mean, to be fair, that's kind of the hope, hope was worth the trade off. I, I, I don't like bringing this up with Johan here, but like you know, like how how Naruto, like you know, everyone complains about the filler episodes, but like Naruto has a legacy, and like it's still super important in the anime community. And like Hero Academia had that potential to be it, but then like with all the complaints we had with like you know the missed opportunities, like. I feel like it really hurts the hero and like I don't think it, it gets I don't I think I don't it doesn't get like the it's not gonna get that that treatment of Naruto or like where people remember it so fondly. I think people are gonna look it back at hero as more like the missed opportunities. I don't know what everyone else is like. If you if they make a fourth movie, like it seems to be following yes. the similar pattern, so Yes. I would go watch it still. So would I. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, I'd still watch it. I would Both pay my be- ticket for the last thirty seconds that are gonna be great animation. <laughs> Oh god. The, the top forum discussion oh. on my anime list for this movie is titled Hot Mess of Garbage. <laughs> Could to answer your question, I rated this I'm I'm rating it now and I rated it a seven. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I gave it a seven. I don't remember though. Mm. You so like, if, did not enjoy it at the level seven. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So so even after nitpicking all that stuff, right? If you if you go in with a with like a neutral stance on the movie, you know, just like like what, what Taylor said, if if you kind of know that it's just going to be like a, a like a, a great hot mess, there's just gonna be lots of missed opportunities. 
uh, you know, not expecting too much. I think it's still an enjoyable movie. And like for a shonen movie, uh, I would probably give it like a seven point five or eight, right? Uh, but I would definitely rate this the lowest out of the three. I think the second movie was the best one, and the yep. first one like definitely had a lot more uh, like high moments and uh, a lot more enjoyable to watch. And since this is the third movie, I w- I was expecting a lot more. Uh, it was still enjoyable, but it, it definitely was a big miss for me. But I mean, I would still recommend you go watch it if you like the series. Mm-hmm. It was basically like a summer flick, an entertaining, an entertaining summer flick. It's just to have fun. It's not, you know, I didn't really think it was supposed to be meant to be taken so seriously. So I enjoyed right, it. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So uh, when I walked out of that movie theater, like my first, my first thought was like, I probably just give it an eight. I still probably keep it the same. I mean, and I don't, I don't want Lord to seven just to be the same as everyone else. But like, when I, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't eight when I walked out of theater, and even all the nitpicks, I'll probably. Give it a little eight. If if it had a little bit more, or even some fan service, it would be like you know, it's a movie. That's what you do in no. movies. Oh, fan there service was fan action. service. <laughs> not Maybe enough not that I can you. remember. <laughs> oh my god! I get guess, here. Yeah. I mean, I would give it a hard, like a solid six, because the last thirty seconds. Sounds like you want to say a five, sir. Sure. I was gonna say five point five, but then cool would look at me like, "What were you expecting?" So okay, okay. No, uh, six. This is this is also this is also why I don't like scores because because you know the scale isn't the same everyone so that's why I, I don't like. No, well, I don't, well definitely I don't it's definitely like... subjected to whoever the reviewer is, right? Because everyone has their own like preference. Like I like Dragon Ball, you know, you know, on like, like Ghibli every, movies. Everyone just like just focus on the mm-hmm. score. Like just, everyone's just gonna ignore like all things before then. So that's why I don't like scores. But so yeah, so that's that's our thoughts on the TV movie. So. Thanks for everyone for watching. Um, we usually do like more uh, more anime reviews, so look out for those on our channel. So right now, we're currently doing an episode review of Mushoku Tensei. So check that out as well. Um, we are, I'll say, we are planning to go watch the Sword Art movie, the progressive one that's coming out Ooh, like in a month here. So yeah, Taylor <laughs> we can't wait for yeah, that. Yeah, let's so, go. So look out for that too. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll uh, try to watch it and we'll try to do another um, another episode on that too. So look look up for the Sword Art movie. So, great times. So that's going to be it for us for, for now. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.